We're in Unit 2C, um, and it's operations with integers continued. I'm on page 9 in this packet. So the problem of the day, write an explanation or rule to a third grader, third grader, on how to add integers. Once you think you are complete, check your notes and see if you would like to add anything. Be ready to share this with the class. So I'm actually not going to answer this for you. You're going to do question one. Fill this in on your own. Now remember, you're writing an explanation and you're talking to a third grader. You can make integers simple. T tell a third grader how to add integers. Number two, you're also going to write this on your own. And we're going to share these in class tomorrow. Write an explanation or rule to a third grader on how to multiply integers. Third graders know how to multiply. Talk about, you know, your times facts. Once you think you are complete, check your notes and see if you want to add anything. So go back and look in the packets. Is there something that you missed? How do you know what's the sign of the answer? Be ready to share this with class. So number one and two, you're going to fill those lines in on, with details and using math words on your own. So I'm going to go on to the examples down here at the bottom. And these examples have to do with the order of operations. That's what we're going to come to next. Order of operations with integers. Okay. Well, we know in arithmetic you have that mnemonic that helps you remember the order of operations. Well, the order of operations, and I don't use the same form of it that you do, I don't call it please like parentheses because you now know several operations that are in grouping symbols. I see a grouping symbol here in number two. The absolute value symbol is a grouping symbol. So you know parentheses, you know absolute value if there's an operation like here in number two inside the absolute value symbol, you have to do that first do the operation inside here. So negative 7 plus 2, you would do that first. Then take the absolute value. That's a grouping symbol. In number 4 here, this is a grouping symbol. The fraction line. So the fraction line, you have to simplify numerators and simplify denominators before you can do the division that a fraction line means. So a fraction line is a grouping symbol. Another grouping symbol is the root symbol. So um, I don't say please and for only parentheses first because there are four symbols now that would come first in the order of operations. Then you look for exponents. Well, I don't see any exponents in our examples. Oh, yep, there's an exponent here. In number four, there's an exponent, negative two squared. Then you look for exponents. Then you look for multiplying and dividing from left to right and adding and subtracting from left to right. So with that in mind, I'm going to do these four examples. Number one says negative 3 plus 4 times negative 2. That 4 sitting directly next to the parentheses means multiply. So they could have written it like this, 4 times negative 2, and put a time symbol in there. Or they could have just written it 4 times negative 2 this way and put both numbers in parentheses or put the 4 right next to the parentheses, which means multiply. So I have negative 3 plus 4 times negative 2. I have multiplying and adding. Well, multiplying always comes before adding. So I'm going to multiply 4 times negative 2. One negative makes it negative 8. And now I have 3 plus negative 8. That is not a parentheses operation. That's just putting the parentheses, separating the plus sign and the negative symbol of the negative 8. So same signs, add and keep. Negative 3 and negative 8 makes negative 11. Final answer. Number 2. Number 2 says 
negative 7 times, there is no time symbol right there. There could be. You could put that little time symbol, the dot. But anytime a number sits next to a grouping symbol, this is the absolute value symbol. That means negative 7 times the absolute value of negative 7 plus 2. Take that absolute value. So we've got to do that grouping symbol first. Negative 7 plus 2, different sign, subtract. That's negative 5. So I have negative 7 times the absolute value of negative 5. Now I've got to take the absolute value next. The absolute value of negative 5 is 5. So now my problem becomes negative 7 times 5. I don't have a symbol there like a parenthesis or a grouping symbol, so I have to put a time symbol in. So I'm going to use the dot as the time symbol. Notice I'm working down my problem. Work down your paper, not across. We're not going this way. We're working down in our problems. So negative 7 times 5, 1 negative makes it negative 35. Final answer. Number 3 says take the absolute value of negative 6 plus the absolute value of 4. Well, absolute value comes before adding. It's a grouping symbol. Negative 6 absolute value is 6 plus 4's absolute value is 4. 6 plus 4 equals 10. Final answer. Number 4. Ooh, lots going on here. We've got a fraction line, grouping symbol. And we have squaring, right here, an exponent. And we have dividing, the fraction line means division. And we have subtraction and multiplying. So this problem read correctly would be the subtraction or the difference of negative 7 and 5 all over negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 10. Lots going on here. So grouping symbols come first. Grouping symbol is the fraction line. I have to simplify this numerator first, which is negative 7 plus 5. Subtraction. Change it to keep. Add the opposite. Now I have negative 7 plus negative 5. That's negative 12. So I'm going to bring down my problem. Everything that I have not done yet. I haven't taken care of that squaring. I haven't done this division. I haven't done that subtraction. And I haven't done 4 times negative 10 yet. Okay, so next in the order of operations, I did my group, first grouping symbol. Now I'm going to have to simplify my denominator, which is negative 2 squared, which means negative 2 times negative 2. Two negatives in the problem gives me positive 4. So I'm rewriting my work, working down, showing every step that I'm doing. Oops, that's negative 4 times negative 10. So now I'm going to do my division there because that's on the left side of the problem, working left to right. Remember, multiply and divide, we go left to right, and in subtract, we go left to right. So this, subtract, this division comes first. Negative 12 divided by 4, well, one negative in the quotient, the answer is going to be negative 3, minus 4 times negative 10. Well, now I have to do this multiply part here. So 4 times negative 10, 1 negative, gives me negative 40. Bring down, leave space. Don't squish your numbers together. Leave space there. So negative 3 minus negative 40. This is a subtraction problem. Last step. Keep negative 3. Change my problem to adding the opposite. So it becomes adding positive 40. So different signs subtract. Now I'm adding. Adding with different signs, however, becomes a subtraction. 40 take away 3 is 37. And keep the sign of the larger absolute value, which is positive 40. So my answer is positive 37. And again, you can put the positive sign or not. Now your job is to make sure that you're speaking in terms of a third grader and telling them how to in number one, how to add integers, and in number two, how to multiply integers. So make sure you're being accurate and using good math vocabulary there.